Nu sitter jag här i Audio Slaves lås bakom den stora Hawaii-scenen. Och jag är faktiskt lite nervös för det här är riktigt tuffa rock and roll killar. Hello guys, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm fine. Actually, I was kind of nervous before I met you. Because really? yeah, because you are a real rock and roll bad. So much attitude and uh -huh. tough music and everything like that. But you seem pretty nice. Right on. Yeah, we're nice people. Yeah. Yeah. We get uh, all the evil out in our rock. Oh. All the evil comes out, channeled out that way. Okay. That's why Timmy's not in jail and I'm not like in an opium den somewhere in Chinatown. Oh, it's hard to make rock. And it, that's where the real emotions are. It's like when we're in the room creating rock, you know? That's when it really comes out and no one's willing to compromise. And so far it's been great. But like when we're on stage and we're in the studio, we get serious, you know? Have you read the, the book Dirt? I think it's called Dirt. Uh, that's a book that Murder Crew has written. Oh, my, that's, uh, my, my, oh yeah, yeah, I haven't read it. Do you you haven't read it? No, I want to read it. Do you know what it's about? I've heard yeah. great things about it. <laughs> I think Tom read it. So will it be a similar book in a couple of years about audio slave? <laughs> yeah, especially the life and times of Tom Morello. He's a partier. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the hot tub parties, my God. But oh, he's hung like a fucking moose too. He is, he's hung like a moose. Hot tub parties, the he doesn't do drugs or drinks, so he has that much extra energy just to be a pimp. Oh, just to be a pimp. Yeah. Sounds nice. It takes a lot of blood, he can't be dehydrated, it takes a lot of blood to actually get the Pringle can yeah. happening. Mm -hmm. If you know what I mean. Yeah, and he's I know what the you kid mean. is he gets a little faint sometimes. Style. Yeah. He's like ah. Oh. His head is big, and you would think that that would be the biggest part of his body, but it's not. It's not. No, hell no. <laughs> but guys, how are you getting along? You've been a band for about a year now, isn't it? How three. Three? About, I think, yeah. So long. I'm, not the, I'm the wrong person to ask because I don't pay attention to time, but it's been around three years, right? Yep. Three, three years since we've been, we met Chris and wrote music, and then... But, you know, we've only been jamming for a short time, you know? Mm. We've only been really a band, I bet you, a short time of that three years, maybe a few months of that or something, mm. you know? Yeah, Six as months as or a year. As far as actually writing music and that kind of thing, making records and... Um, but how long has our record been out? Since November. It'll be one year in November. Yeah. So, um, before you formed the Audio Slave, did you mm. listen to uh, Rage? Yeah, I did. And you liked it? Very much, yeah. And what about you? Same. Yeah, big time Soundgarden fan, yeah. Okay. All of us in Rage were big Soundgarden fans. Yeah, I think that, that actually was what made this thing happen so quickly and so easily. It wasn't like, um, it wasn't like I was going in to write music with guys and I didn't know what they could sound like. Um, and the, it wasn't like they didn't know how I would sing or what kind of lyrics I might write or that kind of thing. I mean, that, that, there was no like mystery in terms of the only thing that was a mystery was like we all wanted to go and do something we hadn't done before musically. We weren't worried about like, well, I want it to sound kind of like this, or, or you want it to sound like that. It was like we're, we all wanted to go into a new place, and we didn't know what that was going to be. That was a mystery, and we were just discovering that one song at a time. But, but there was no, uh, there was no like getting acquainted with each other's styles. We already kind of knew it, and I think that's a big reason why we even got into a room in the first place, um, just because it it just made sense. But your lyrics is not that uh, politic anymore. But I know that you have a project called Axis for Justice. That's actually Tom Morello's uh, okay. brainchild there. And that's what we decided as a band that we would do with the politics would be let Tom kind of handle it. He's passionate about it. And not that we are not interested in doing benefits and raising money for different, different charitable organizations. But uh, Morello is passionate, you know, and he went to school, went to Harvard. and political science, the whole bit, and I really truly believe in him as the guy for the job, and I, I am more passionate about Tom Morello than I am about any of the politics that might come from him.